when the lights go out or a storm hits, you're without power. If you can generate power, well, you're in luck. You're doing better than those that cannot. And in doing so, it is always wise to be aware of the consumption of everything around you. And I put this video together here to kind of show some of the basic things that you're going to need in a survival situation and just kind of test a few different things here in terms of what you'll need to survive. You're going to need heat. You're going to need water. You're going to need food, things of that nature. And I'm going to start off here with the Yeti. This is a solar generator, the Goal Zero 1250. And we are going to test a patent heater, as you can see here. And we'll start on phase one. It has two different modes here. And we'll kick up phase one. You can see it sucked down the battery juice in at 1107, right around 1100. That's pulling a lot of watts. These are things you want to test. If you have a generator or something, something similar, it would be wise to test the different products and see exactly how much you're going to pull. And you can see here, flipping it to the second mode, it just jumped to 1230. They're in that second mode right there. And we'll click it back down and you can see it drop back down. So... If you're looking to save, you definitely want to be operating off that first mode, but a heater pulling a lot of wattage, no way around it right there. If you have a fireplace or something like that, that would be a huge advantage for heat, cooking, things of that nature. You won't have to worry about that. Next, we'll test this burner has two sides, a smaller right side, a larger left side. And we'll kick up the right side, the smaller side, with right around 523, 520. Now, I turn on the left side, look at that. The bigger burner added to it really starts to, to pull the energy out of the unit. So I'm going to shut that off. Just use the one burner for cooking here, the smaller one on the right, just to get the job done uh, if I'm not cooking over an open fire. But if you had to, you need to know exactly how many watts you're going to be pulling, and then, you know, all the way with both going here, that's how much you're going to be pulling, and that takes a lot of wattage. Now I'm going to look to hook up a computer here and just test the wattage on the computer see exactly what it's pulling and write that down looks to be somewhere right around 30 watts on average and once you have your solar panel hooked up and positioned you'll be able to see exactly how many watts you're pulling in We'll hook up a cell phone here, and then you can see exactly how much you're bringing in compared to how much you're using when trying to keep it balanced. And then if one solar panel is not enough, you may want to add more. Now, it's not taking a reading here on the cell phone. It is charging it. So what I'm going to do, because it's such a small reading, I think, maybe five or below, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to hook something else uh, into the left side, something that's going to pull some power. And I could probably use just a standard light, which is pulling at 44, standard light, at 44 watts. And I'll add the charger to it, 44, 45 watts here. And there we go. About 5 watts is what the cell phone charger is pulling there. And I'll write all this down and keep track of this. Now, in terms of doing some other lighting and other things, 
I also tested one of the energy efficient lights, which I'm not big on, but those were 14 watts. And then when I plugged in the LED lights, the LED lights were only 8 watts. And the refrigerator running full steam was 690 watts. Full size, regular refrigerator, 690 watts. And you can see that the double burner was pulling more than that. Even the heater. Heater was pulling 1050. So it really pays off to have a fireplace, a place to cook with open fire, or a fireplace to keep the house warm. If you can do that, then you can avoid having to really consume a lot of wattage right there just between those two and it would help a whole bunch in the other department the cpu only 30 watts cell phone 7 watts the fridge 690 normal light uh, 44 watts leds 8 so things to think about i wanted to test a few things and throw it out there and if you have anything like this a setup of your own you may want to Take a look at exactly what kind of power you're going to be consuming on a daily basis if you were put in that position. You may need to upgrade to get another solar unit. And interesting that the very first thing in this tariff war was solar. In the end, it affects us. So get what you need as soon as possible, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you got a good setup that's going to keep you powered if the lights go out, I'll leave a link. It's been Dabu 7. Peace.